As far as choice of what medications to use uh, for optic neuritis and MS, uh, our choices now are robust. Uh, some patients are still treated with injectable therapy, like clotirmer acetate or the interferons, uh, but many are also treated with oral medications as well as intravenous infusions. Um, while we can re uh, prevent a lot of relapses now, uh, where MS therapy needs to move to, and we'll talk about this a little later in the program, is how do we repair damage? And that's really going to be the focus of the next decade in this therapy. So, Rod, you mentioned earlier a neuromyelitis optica and NMO. So bring our audience up to date uh, as to how this has changed what happens with the management of acute optic neuritis and you also mentioned something about how the optic nerve looks on MRI. Yeah, so with, uh, it used to be we would lump all inflammatory optic neuropathy together that looks somewhat like MS. We now know that there are some variants and there's a spectrum of disease. Um, around the early to mid 2000s, there became a blood test available for neuromyelitis optica, which was an antibody to aquaporin 4. And that was a game changer because we could now define by pathophysiology and identify with a blood test those patients who were going to be at risk for a more progressive disease. And that really started to split up NMO from MS with more certainty. Because before that, if you looked at the literature, there were lumpers and splitters. Some people just felt that NMO was a sort of variant of MS. And that's clearly not been shown to be the case, not only diagnostically, but also therapeutically, where some patients will uh, respond poorly to the traditional MS medications who are treated for NMO. So that the, the availability of this antibody to aquaporin 4 was a game changer for us. And what was noticed relatively early on was patients who had more severe optic nerve involvement, poor vision, uh, bilaterality, simultaneous involvement, or what I mentioned before with the degree of enhancement of the optic nerve, longer stretches of enhancement, extending into the optic chiasm, for example, those were patients who were somehow different immunologically and how their inflammation occurred, and they are at risk for having a positive NMO blood test. And we've identified those now as candidates to go ahead and get those blood tests straight away and not wait for a clinical response. Yeah, so I, I cannot emphasize the importance of what Raj has said uh, to the daily practice now of neurology, ophthalmology, and neuro-ophthalmology. Uh, NMO is a vicious disease. It's just not a little bit worse uh, demyelination. Uh, beautiful work by Claudia Lucinetti uh, from Mayo Clinic has shown that this is a vasculitis that has special preference uh, for the optic nerve, retina, an area of the brain uh, near the uh, start of the spinal cord called the medulla, the area postrema, and for long segments of the spinal cord. And Rod also mentioned that we were taught that you only need to think about NMO, or what was called de Vick's disease, if both optic nerves were involved. Completely false. Every patient who comes to see us, either in the Will's Eye emergency room or to us in clinic, gets an NMO titer and something called an anti-MOG, M-O-G titer, that we'll have Rod talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. Other things as clinicians you wanna ask about is whether patients in the past ever had a couple of weeks of uncontrollable hiccups. And that's because this inflammation affects the area postrema in the medulla. Other rare symptoms is itching. And it's now well documented that an attack of itching lasting for weeks or a month can be a sign of neuromyelitis optica before we have vision loss. 
we used to sometimes image the spinal cord and optic neuritis patients, but now we do it in everybody, the cervical and thoracic cord. And Rod mentioned how long the area of optic nerve inflammation is in NMO. And what we do now is image the cord in everyone because you'll see asymptomatic lesions that stretch over several segments of the cord. And there are patients who will have what's called seronegative NMO. That is the blood test will be negative, but they'll have these clinical features or the neuroradiologic features, and that's still NMO, all right? Anybody who doesn't get better with steroids, I am very suspicious of NMO. And now we have a very low threshold to move to a technique called plasmapheresis to wash out their blood. And that's you know, something that we've had some dramatic success with. 